Volumetric materials are one of those things that are really known for taking a long time to render and simulate. And that's why a lot of video games that you see don't have actual true volume for things like smoke and fire, but instead are using billboard particles and things like that. And you can take advantage of this inside of Blender for your animations if you're animating something that's farther away and you don't necessarily need all of the detail, or if you just want to get a quick result without having to go through all of the simulation. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create fake smoke inside of Blender. So there are a couple things that we have to look at in order to achieve this. One of them being particle size over lifetime. So as you can see, when it comes out of the train, it's very small, but it has to simulate the smoke sort of dispersing throughout the air. And another thing is that you have to change the material properties over time to fade away. And it won't just, you know, disappear like it does in the viewport. You can see right on the end, it's just disappearing, uh, but we want it to fade away instead. And we can do both of those inside of Blender. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm actually just going to take this particle system and delete it. Actually, not delete the object. I'll just delete the particle system. Boom, so it's gone. All we have here is this wind force field. So it's set to about 7.6. And you can find this train file in the description below. It's on BlendSwap by Chris Kuhn. It's Creative Commons Zero. so. Uh, you can use it for whatever you want. You don't even have to mention him, but he's a pretty cool guy, so I want to make sure he gets credit for that. So here we have this object that's right inside, and the model on BlendSwap actually comes with a particle system, but here I'm just going to set it up myself. So let's add a new particle system, and if we play it back, it just sort of falls out. And of course we don't want that, because smoke doesn't really react to gravity it's not a heavy thing so let's go down to the field weights down here and start turning gravity down if we turn it off then you can see that it can float up freely and then up here in the velocity we can just change the z velocity until it's looking like however we want it You can actually give gravity a negative value if you'd like. Maybe negative 0.1 just so it continues to go up over time. Alright, so that's really quickly a very simple smoke particle system. But of course we need an actual object for that particle system. So typically in games and things like that you'll use billboard particles. And unfortunately they don't work inside of cycles. You can use them for Blender internal, but they don't really work right now in cycles, and we need to use cycles to get the material properties over their lifetime, so we're kind of stuck with that. However, we can easily add in an image as a plane, so we can go File, Import Images as Planes. This is an add-on that you can install, just search for Images as Planes in the user preferences, and it'll come right up. So I can go to textures smoke and I have this smoke texture right here from CG textures I'll just go to CG textures search for smoke and you'll find a whole bunch of these uh, let's go to textured view so we can see it there we go so you can see I've downloaded this one and I've actually gone into Photoshop and just kind of painted black around these edges and that way we don't have smoke going right up to the end and creating those harsh edges that you might see. So I've just gone ahead and softened that up, but otherwise it's just a regular smoke texture. And down here you can see it's called Smoke02. Let's just rename all that by control clicking and just calling it Smoke Plane. There we go. And now under our particle settings we can go down under Render and choose Object Smoke Plane. And now we have a whole bunch of little smoke planes coming up. Now we need them actually oriented to the camera. So one thing that we can do is we can either get them facing the camera initially, but if we do that, they're not going to be able to rotate over time. Or you could have them rotate over time and get all those cool effects, but they won't all be facing the camera. So unfortunately, you just have to pick your poison in this case. 
Uh, I'm not going to have them face the camera. I'm going to give them a random rotation. However, if you do want them to, you can take this object, give it a constraint, say a track to, track that to the camera, and then these particles will follow suit. But not over the lifetime, just initially. As long as you click rotation down here under the render. But I'm going to give them a random rotation, so let's go up to rotation, check that on. Now velocity hair doesn't really have a random setting, however we can choose normal. And I think you'll have to keep this playing to actually see any of those results. So we can give that a random value, also give it a random phase, and there you go, you can see that there now twisting. Let's bump up the size just a little bit. I'm going to say 1.5. So now they are very big. Uh, but now you can see how it's rotating over initially. Uh, it's not rotating over time yet. For that, we need angular velocity. So first, let's check on dynamic, just so that it can rotate based upon the wind and the way that they're moving. And also, we can change the angular velocity to something like 1. If you change it too high, you know, it'll get too much too much spin, but size of one should be about good. So now we have that, but one thing that we are lacking is changing the size over time. And that's something that I thought about initially, and I was like, I just don't know if we can do that. And I looked online and nobody even had answers for it. You can Google it and it's just bunches of people asking how to do it but nobody had a solution and then finally I figured it out so down here under textures you can just add a new texture and just call this smoke over time alright and then go to the texture settings go up make sure you have the particle system texture chosen and right now it's just a black empty image let's change that to blend so now it's going to blend based on the lifetime and now we can uncheck time and choose size so if we use a color ramp right here we can change the size but right now actually it's mapped to generated coordinates which means it's just going to pick whatever's right in the middle so you can see that changing here will change the size, but it'll change the size for all of them. So let's change this coordinates from generated to strand particle, and there we go. So this is really cool. You can change the color ramp if you'd like. Uh, I'm going to start out with a value of about 0.2. So the cool thing about this is changing the value is directly changing the size. So remember we had a size of 0.15, I believe. So let's go 0.1, and that'll be a nice percentage of that, because we don't want zero. We don't want them to start from nothing. And then we can take this and maybe pull it in a little bit closer so that they can grow a bit faster. Maybe change this to ease to get a nice blend, and there we go. So now we have our particle size changing over lifetime. And of course, you can do that for all of these different attributes, uh, like time, density, so if you want pump, puffs of smoke, you could get a color ramp with a whole bunch of black and whites next to each other and check on density and then you would get those sort of puffs. Now the very last step is to get this working with cycles materials. So let's hop over to the materials here, look through our rendered view. So while I was going ahead and making the material, afterwards I realized that I had changed something in my file that I had been using to practice and I didn't revert it back before I started the video so I'm just kinda of splicing this in right here as I'm editing uh, what you need to do to get rid of all of this black stuff right here is just change the transparency uh, bounces right here under the light paths in the render panel so by default it's set to something like 8 or 10 or something like that uh, but you'll need to turn that up because it's only going to go through 8 of these planes and it'll terminate to complete blackness, which of course we don't want at all. So you could either change this to full global illumination or just increase this to something like, let's go 150. And the minimum you'll probably want around 150 as well. And it'll get rid of all of those black spots that you don't need. So if those are continuing to bug you, just 
make sure you have those cranked up, especially if you have a lot of particles. So, all right, back to where we were. And right now we just have a bunch of planes with our image on it. So ch uh, choose the master image here and pull up your node editor and let's get this material cracked out. So first it's just a diffuse material. Let's take away this color because we don't actually need it for that. Instead, we want to use that to mix with transparency. So let's add a shader, mix shader, add shader transparent. There we go. And now we can choose this color, plug it into the factor, use our non-color data, and it looks like we have that backwards, so let's just switch these two nodes, and there we go. We now have our smoke. So that's looking pretty good. You might want to make it a little bit less dense. If you want that, you can just decrease the value of this color here. But I think for now that's looking all right. But the last thing is to change it over the lifetime. So let's add another node. We're going to use input and particle info. And now we can get the lifetime and age. So I'm going to use a uh, converter and math node. So we can plug in, I believe it's the lifetime. I was trying this earlier. Uh, and we need to divide it. Because by default, if we take a look at it, it's just all white. So we need to actually take that and divide it by a very high number. Maybe it's age. Yep, it's age. Not lifetime, my mistake. So I think I'd use something like 45. Uh, let's go with 36 for this one. It totally depends on what your lifetime you have set as. Uh, but you want to make sure that it's completely white at the end, so it's completely transparent before it actually dies. Uh, but then you can have this black right here be completely opaque while it's down near the spout. So you can also take a converter and color ramp to adjust this if you'd like. Just sort of move that up a little bit. So if we take that and we take a color and mix RGB so we need to think about this first so we have the black where we want it to be opaque the white where we want it to be transparent and if we take a look at this mix node it looks like if we make one white and one black if we go all the way white then it's all the way opaque so it looks like black is transparent so let's take this initial texture and mix it with black based on this color ramp. So when we plug that in, we now have the effect that we want, and it's fading out over time. All right, so that's just about all there is to creating fake smoke in Blender using particle systems. So remember that we took an image plane with some transparency and a smoke texture applied to it. We added it to a plane, made that the object that the particle system renders, made sure we had a good amount of random rotation. We changed the particle size over time with a texture ramp, that is applied to the particles, and lastly we change the particle opacity over time with cycles lifetime in the uh, particle info node. So thanks for watching this video, I'm Jonathan Lampel with Blender HD, and I'll see you next time.